in a recently released video where I attempted to show whether or not the Lexata tower stove would actually gasify with wood fuel. I used another stove to compare it with and that was the other Lexata wood gas stove that I've had for quite some time. And I thought, why not compare these two stoves together to allow you to make a decision whether or not either one of these is something you want to purchase. If you're interested, keep watching. So as with other stove comparison test sets we have done, I will be looking at a few factors. First off, we're actually going to be comparing the stoves in terms of their weight, their size, their compactness, and their versatility, as well as their cost. But we will also be looking at these stoves in terms of their performance. Now, in previous videos, I had focused on boil time for the stoves as a measure of efficiency for each stove. In reality, that's not a great measure of efficiency. The idea was just to see what difference each of these stoves would make in terms of using the same amount of wood, how efficiently they would go through that wood in terms of burn time and boil time. And as was pointed out by a number of my viewers, a number of my viewers, that, that boil time isn't all that important to people who are using small wood stoves, and it's not to me either. That's not to see how quickly I can bring water to a boil when I'm in the woods, because to be honest, that's just a small part of everything I'm doing when I'm setting up and making a meal, and boil time, again, is not all that important. It was just an artificial measure of efficiency for the stoves. So we are going to forgo the boil time today, but what I will do is take a quick look to see just how quickly or in terms of which one does bring the same amount of water to a boil. And the reason I'm doing it that way is because I'm going to load these stoves according to the amount of wood they will hold, not necessarily an equal amount of wood. So I'll show you what I mean. Okay, when comparing the two stoves, let's start by bringing the two contenders together and we'll start by doing a few statistics on size, which is of course size and weights, which of course I will annotate in the description below the video. And let's go over the one that we've been testing most recently for, as the first one, which is the Lexata Tower Stove. So here is what I've referred to as the Lexata Tower Stove. It doesn't actually have the name Tower Stove attached to it when you see this on eBay or AliExpress or Amazon or anywhere else. It's just a small Lexata stove. I call it a Tower Stove because of the height that it is, uh, the height of it when it's fully assembled. So let's start with a few things. Here it is in the assembled kit that I have for it, and I won't go over the whole kit, but I will tell you that this is the kit as I carry it most often and this kit weighs in at one pound six ounces. Now let's just hold on to that for a minute because I think you'll be surprised at the weight of the other kit as well. So inside what do you get? Well in this kit I have the Camel 1.2 liter pot which you will have seen many times on my channel if you're watching my videos but again we're not used looking so much at the pot so I'll put that aside for now. Oh, by the way, this is the stuff sack that comes with this little Lixata stove. And uh, a few people suggested that this stuff sack and the bulk of it, and it's not that it's really bulky, but there is some thickness to it, is what's keeping the lid, and I probably I should demonstrate this, is keeping the lid from closing properly on top of the camel wheel. As you'll notice, there's a slight gap right here because of it. And people had suggested, and they were right of course, is that if I take this out of this bag and either make another small bag for it or just forgo the bag altogether, that the lid will fit on much better. And it does. It closes all but maybe a sixteenth of an inch. So it is a much tighter fit without the bag. Uh, whether or not you use a bag is up to you. The bag, I suppose, is intended for a couple of things, to keep everything assembled in one spot and maybe to keep the inside of your pot clean. Truth is, I, other systems that I have, I put the stoves inside of the pots without any bag. It never gets that dirty. So it's not something I worry about. So I may start carrying it that way in the future. All right, once again, how quickly does this set up? There's three parts to the stove, the base, the burn chamber and the pot stand. Drop the pots or the burn chamber through the pot stand and your stove is totally set up. Now I won't go into too much of a description of the entire stove because I've done that in other videos, but I will just recount the, the some of the stats. So in its assembled state, this stove comes in at seven and three quarter inches high. So that's why I call it the tower stove. It is a bit tall. In its unassembled state, it comes in at four and a quarter, so fairly compact. I quite like that. The width of the stove, 
which is measured across the base, comes in at 4.5 inches. And the total weight for what you see in front of you right here, plus a couple of pot stands, which I have set aside here. And I'm showing you these pot stands now. I don't use them. I just don't feel the need. If I had a very small cup, then, uh, uh, you know, something smaller than the diameter of the pot stand without the crossbars, I would probably use them. So I do carry them. But this total package comes in at six and a half ounces. So a rather lightweight, actually a very lightweight little kit. I was quite pleased with this kit. Putting that aside. All right, let's put this aside and bring out this kit. So I do have other videos with this, actually some of my earliest videos, because I have had this stove for, for that long. I guess I should probably talk about it in its compact state. So uh, again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time describing the stove or the cook kit, but I will go over some of the stats just so that you get an idea how it compares against the Luxata Tower Stove. So this is a Luxata wood gas stove in an MSR Seagull stowaway pot. That's how they fit so nicely together. Now this, again, does not have a name from Luxata. Most people just call it the Luxata wood gas stove, which is fine. It's important to remember that this is a near clone, a very close copy of the Silver Fire Scout, which is another brand name so of another stove, which is very, very similar in design. So I just want to clarify that as well. So I'm just going to refer this now, in this video at least, as the Scout Stove. So it will be the Tower Stove and the Scout Stove. Okay, total weight of the kit as I have it right here, 1 pound 11 ounces. Do you know, I used to think this was a heavy kit, but when I compared it against the Tower Stove kit, it comes in very close. The, the Tower Stove kit comes at 1 pound 6 ounces. This, this comes in at 1 pound 11 ounces. Okay, I'm not an ultra light hiker, so let's just clarify this. There is still some weight to this, but it is not that much in the overall scheme of things. So uh, that's what the weight of this is. All right, now let's take it out of the bag and put it together. So here it is inside of the MSR Seagull stowaway pot. This is the 775 milliliter pot, the second smallest in their lineup. But what's neat about this is the stove fits inside just perfectly. So let's take the stove out. There's the base. There is the burn chamber, and I'll show the burn chamber in two parts, and there's the pot stand. So there it is fully assembled. Let me put the pot aside. So let's very quickly talk about this stove in terms of its dimensions. So the Scout, as it's assembled right now, comes in at seven and a quarter inches tall, right to the tall top of the pot stand. But when it's in that When it's in that compacted state, it comes in at 2.75 inches. So it's a little shorter than the tower stove when it's compacted, but it's still just a little shorter than the tower stove when it's fully assembled. And you can see by the discoloration and everything that this stove has been well used, well loved. I do take care of my stoves, so after every couple of burns, you know, in fact, probably after most burns, I do clean them out and I do put a little mineral oil on them just to keep them from rusting. So they darken, but they don't rust that way. Okay, the width of this stove measured across the base comes in at five and a quarter inches. So it's about and not quite three quarters of an inch wider than the tower stove is. The weight of this stove alone comes in at nearly twice the weight of the tower stove at 14 ounces. So the stove itself is much heavier, but overall the kits, just the way I had them assembled, aren't that much different, which actually kind of surprised me. So let's bring the two stoves back into view. All right, so there we have the two stoves side by side, the Luxata tower stove here and the Luxata scout stove here. All right, for the sake of time, I have preloaded both of these stoves with kiln dried hardwood, primarily uh, maple and oak, maybe a little bit of birch inside. I'll show you this, how I've loaded the stove. So this is the Luxetta Scout stove, and it is top or vertically loaded, and that's uh, what I find the easiest thing to do to get a burn going with these stoves because it allows air to come move up through. I'll be using some inexpensive commercial fire starter and I'll be building a fire on top using dry wood chips. Same thing for the tower stove, preloaded. A little bit more wood in the, the larger stove than in the, this, the tower stove, but uh, for this test it'll work out just fine. So what am I going to do? 
I'm bringing the burn chamber. You notice I don't have the pot stand on yet because I'll get the fire going and then I'll put the pot stand on. You can't do that with the tower stove. I'm going to light these up. Make sure that is going. Down inside there. Are you going? Yes, you are. Same thing with this one. I can put that in better, a little better in the center. Now as those little wax cardboard fire starters get started, I'll put some wood chips on top. Uh, they look like they're getting started quick enough to start feeding small wood chips. Now, if I was in the woods, of course, this would be an entirely different process. I would still preload the stove with wood, but I'd be using different materials to light it with and to build a small fire on top than I am here. The trick is to get a fire going on top of your fuel because it is that original fire, which does tend to smoke when you first get it going, that original fire that will create the embers and start the pyrolysis effect down in the fuel load below. All right, starting to take off quickly now. A bit more wood chips there, a bit more wood chips here. I almost put that one out. Now I'll put the pot stand on. Okay, I have a good burn going in both of these stoves right now. So what I think I'll do is I'll want to put the pots of water on. You'll note that I'm not using a windscreen today. Uh, really, a windscreen is an ideal thing that you should be using, either that or build some kind of a wind block around the stoves to get the most efficiency out of them. If you don't use them, it doesn't mean that the stoves won't bring water to a boil. They'll just bring water to a boil a little quicker if you do use a windscreen. So today I don't feel the need to, still, even though I, it would benefit from using a windscreen. But uh, I'm going to go without today for this test. So what I'll do is I'm just going to watch these. I am not starting the timer on my watch to see how long it takes to come to a boil. I'm just going to see which one comes to a boil first. And that's all that we're going to do for this. All right, uh, we'll bring it back as the water comes to a boil. Okay, I think I see steam coming out from under the stove. Yep, the Lixada Scout model stove is boiling hard, which is really nice. Let's just check the tower stove. Not quite, not quite. Okay, as I wait on this one to see if it is actually going to come to a hard, well, it will. It will come to a hard rolling boil. It's a matter of how much longer it's going to take. I will tell you that I did have to throw a few extra pieces of wood in through the open chamber to keep the fire going. It went through its first load of wood much quicker. However, the Luxata scope model it still has a lot of fuel in it. Yes, it did start with more fuel, probably a third again as much as the, the uh, tower stove had, but there is a lot of fuel, a lot of heat being generated, and that will continue to burn for quite a while. Have I got a boil yet? Ah, bubbles coming up, but it's not hard rolling. Okay, I don't think it's necessary to, to continue to watch the tower stove to see how long it's going to come to a boil. It will come to a boil, but we needed to test here. Not quite. What we needed to see is which one would come to a boil first. So I think we have enough now that we can draw some conclusions about the Luxada wood gasifying stove, the one I'm now calling the scout stove, and the Luxada tower stove, so that we can uh, wrap this video up. Okay, interesting results comparing the Luxada tower stove with the Luxada scout stove. Uh, you know, it's been a while since I had used this stove. I, I used to use it quite a bit. It was one of the first stoves that I purchased myself a few years ago. And uh, I remember it being a good, effective w uh, user. And uh, why I stopped using it? Well, not because I didn't like the stove, but because I had so many other stoves I needed to test out or wanted to test out. Now, let's just talk about the two stoves in comparison. Do you know, yes, this Scout model is much bigger physically than the other stove, but the weights aren't all that appreciably different. Maybe half again the weight of the uh, tower stove. And compactness, well, it is a little wider, but it compacts down into a shorter overall weight, uh, size. So again, not that much of a difference. 
Uh, Price-wise, I believe you'll find that the, the tower stove sells a little less money than does the wood gas stove. And I'll put some uh, links to where you can purchase these stoves below, but I know that the prices will vary depend on what country you're in and where you're buying it from. So I just will put those in below just so you have an idea where to start looking for that. Something else I'll mention is that this stove is now being sold under a multitude of different brand names, some with slightly uh, different variations in design, some with different tops on them, but mostly they, they are designed basically the same as far as the double chambered and the way they go together in three pieces. I will tell you though, if you are looking to buy one of these stoves and use it in combination with the MSR 775 milliliter Seagull stowaway pot, make sure you have one that has the dimensions that will match. And again, the, the dimensions will be in the show notes below so that you can make sure because there is a larger model of this being sold now great stove just bigger than you might think it is when you get it certainly not the it's well it's considerably bigger than this one is all right in terms of performance well it was interesting I have had issues with this before in other tests the one, especially the test I compared it with the solar light where a single load of wood does not want to bring two cups of water to a boil now mind you the temperature outside right now here in Halifax is 12 degrees Celsius and it was cold tap water that I was using uh, but, you know, if I'm going to use this in the winter, it's going to be even colder yet. That's not the end of the world, the fact that a single load of wood doesn't uh, work, because I'll just continue to add more wood to it. The other thing I want to say about that is that I waited until I got a good, effective burn going in this stove before I put the water on top of it. If I was out in the wood, as soon as I knew that the, that the fire is self-sustaining, even if it was smoky, I would have put the pot on it right away. So it would have been on the heat much sooner than I did in these tests. All right, as far as this stove goes, I had forgotten just how well it performs. You know, one load of wood, not only did it bring to the water to a boil faster, but it lasted <laughs> probably twice as long. I didn't need to add extra wood to this, and there was still wood left over at the end of the, end of the test. So, once again, this is an effective performer. If you have one of these and you're happy with it, you're not interested in getting a smaller stove, don't. This one works great this one works better and that's what I'm going to say about the two of them. I'll continue to use both of these stove knowing that this is a little bit more effective performer. I expect it is also in the winter time than probably better than this. That's a test for a future date though when it gets a little colder here. The one advantage I like of this stove over this one is the depth of the burn chamber. So the in internal burn chamber is a little taller, allowing me to put in a little longer sticks, meaning I don't have to process them as small and do as much work to feed this one. It also means that I can add extra sticks because of the pot stand. I can bring sticks up again, even higher than the burn chamber. Yeah, not an effective burn or efficient burn, but it still burns and it will still work its way down into the main body of the fuel. So this one is a little easier to use in terms of finding and processing wood than in this one. This one just happens to be a little bit better performer overall. Okay, I think I'll open it up to any comments you might have about these two stoves and how they worked in comparison with each other. And uh, we'll see what those, what those comments bring and whether or not they'll produce another video. But until then, get out and explore. Take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.